am That Organic Mom and today I'm going to show you how we made these cute dryer balls. Um, the reason that I use dryer balls is because I do not use fabric softener or dryer sheets and um, these are just less toxic and they help to cut down on static clean and they also um, cut the drying time in your dryer. Now these three really ugly dryer balls I have had for about two years and all of the stained looking spots that's where I have tried using various different kinds of essential oils and I believe the one that made the gray looking stains is when I tried to use a vanilla essential oil which was black and even though I've washed them and dried them probably hundreds maybe even thousands of times um, the stain won't come out so Anyways, they still, they're clean and they still have a lot of use in them. They're just not as pretty as the new ones, which I am about to show you how we made these. My seven-year-old and my nine-year-old helped me make these. Now these are um, dryer hedgehogs and they are so worn out, but I still use them sometimes. They do kind of the same thing, but they're... Um, just not as natural. These are made from a type of plastic and they're still available on Amazon and I'll share the link for those um, in the description below. But this video is about how we made these wool dryer balls. It's super simple and fun and so I'm going to make enough to fill up this basket and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make these. Probably fit them in now. So the first thing you want to know when you're buying the wool for this project is that it needs to be 100% pure wool and you can look on the label and as you can see I got this one at Hobby Lobby and it says 100% wool now I like this brand because it is very inexpensive but they do have one that has a very similar label and it says um, I love this wool blend that blend will not work when you are making dryer balls because it has acrylic in it and acrylic will not felt so it does have to say 100 percent pure wool on the package to be able to use it for these dryer balls that we're going to make and we chose these three colors which color do you want to use shauna this that one okay so that's the color Shauna is going to use. I'm going to use this color. So let's get started. The color I'm using is called Brindle and the color Shauna is using is called Toasted Almond. And then we did get one extra color and the other color that we might make a few out of, this one is called Biscuit. So the first thing you want to do when you're getting ready for your dryer ball is to find the end of the yarn. Have you found your Shauna? Okay, good. So what you might want to do is if you have a younger person helping you, you might want to start by just wrapping the first little bit up like this to get it started okay I think this one is just about ready for Shauna to start on so I'm gonna pass this one and you have to watch out for cats I have a feeling that Bella wants to play with this Carmen yours is about ready so what you want to do is just make sure you hold it tightly and wrap it around and then every time you're wrapping it you can just turn it slightly Okay, turn it until you keep a nice round shape. Okay, here you go, Harm. Good job, Shauna. Okay, I'm going to stop this one at about this size. You can make one bigger or um, you can make small. I'd say this is about the size of a baseball. And if you wanted it bigger, you could use the entire um, thing of yarn and it would probably be about the size of a softball but I think I could get two out of this so I'm gonna try and what I'm gonna do is just cut through here 
and then I'm going to stick a crochet hook through here. Not mine. Yours isn't ready yet. And then I'm going to pull this piece of yarn through like that so that the little end piece is lost in the middle. So that's the first one and that's the first step. If your kids are like mine, they will probably get bored of winding the ball when it gets about this size. I'm not bored. You're not bored? Nope. Let's see yours, Harmon. Good job. I'm going to stick it through and get the end of the yarn and pull it back through. Okay, this is Shauna's finished ball, and so we're ready for step two. And step two is just to take an old hose, and we're going to um, insert the first ball all the way in, and then I'm just going to tie a knot in between. Here's the first one. So now we have four. Is that all we ended up with is four? So I'm going to tie a knot in between each dryer ball so that I can add this to a load of laundry. Um, a hot water wash and a cold water rinse will do the best um, as far as felting these. So I'm going to go pop them in the washer right now. Okay, we have washed and dried our dryer balls. Um, in the wash cycle, I used a hot wash and a cool rinse, and then I just added them in with a load of jeans. I actually did it twice just to make sure, and then the second load was with a load of towels, and so they've been washed and dried twice. And as you can see, they have felted really well. The yarn strands are completely felted together. So now when you want to use these in the dryer, um, Shauna's going to demonstrate how we just, I think we're going to use some lavender oil. Let's see, yes, lavender. And we are going to just put a drop on each of the balls. And then we can add these to a load of laundry. And the laundry will come out smelling amazing. And actually, the house smells really good when you use these in your um, dryer as well. So that's good. Shauna's putting those drops on there. You got about four drops on that one. So you can add as many dryer balls to your laundry as you choose. Mm -hmm. 